Okay, I think one of the worst things that can happen after baking a cake is when it sinks in the middle. And this can happen due to a whole number of reasons, starting with number one, your ratio of ingredients is incorrect. If you have too much liquid or too much fat in your cake batter, then this can result in a cake with a weak structure which can cause it to sink in the middle. Bottom line, use a scale when it comes to measuring your ingredients as opposed to cut measurements for the most accurate results. Number two is that the cake tin that you're using is too small. Now most recipes will tell you which size cake tin to use and how many you need. So for example, for most of my recipes, I use two 8 inch cake tins. Now if you decide to use different sized cake tins, so for example 6 inch cake tins, or you decide to pour all of the batter into one cake tin, then you need to make sure that you're adjusting your recipe. So for example, for my red velvet cake recipe, you need to use two 8 inch cake tins. So I can't just go ahead and pour all of my batter into one 8 inch cake tin because there's going to be too much batter in one cake tin. And this is because the weight of the batter is too much for the cake to support, and this can cause the cake to collapse and sink in the middle as it bakes. And this can be especially true for cake recipes which you know have a more softer delicate kind of structure to them which many of my cake recipes do. Now what I like to do to make sure I don't have too much cake batter in one cake tin is I like to look at the height of the amount of batter that's placed into the original cake tin. So for example in my vanilla cake recipe my batter is just under about 1.5 inches high. So now if I decide to place all of my batter into one larger cake tin as opposed to two cake tins then I'll make sure that my batter isn't higher than around kind of 1.5 inches and this is just an easy way to make sure that you're not putting too much cake batter into one cake tin. Now number three is under mixing your cake batter, particularly if the recipe requires you to hand mix your dry ingredients in at the end. This is because under mixing the cake batter doesn't allow the ingredients to incorporate well enough, which can result in uneven baking. And under mixing can also mean that, you know, not enough gluten has been formed to support the structure of our cake, which can cause it to collapse. On the other hand, overmixing can also cause your cake to collapse. Now, I know this can be really confusing because it's like, am I undermixing or am I overmixing? But you know, one of the key things here is when it comes to overmixing, it's usually referring to the creaming process. So creaming is when we whip our butter and sugar together, and this is usually done at the beginning of, you know, making our cake batter. Now the problem with over creaming is you can create too many air bubbles which results in a weak structure that, you know, isn't able to support the weight of the cake as it bakes. And if you cream your butter and sugar at too high of a speed, this can also create a lot of kind of large air bubbles which then pop as our cake bakes. As a rule of thumb, unless your recipe states otherwise, is to only cream your butter and sugar until it's light and fluffy, which should take no longer than three minutes. Now the next reason why your cakes may be sinking is actually a really simple one, and it's that you're opening the oven door to check your cake too early. Now when a cake is baking, it relies on a precise balance of heat, time and ingredients to rise properly and set. Now if the oven door is open too early, this can cause a rush of cold air into the oven and can cause the temperature to drop pretty drastically. And what this can do is cause the cake to stop rising and set prematurely before the structure is strong enough to support the weight of the cake. So as a rule of thumb, I would only recommend checking your cake when at least three quarters of the stated cooking time has passed. Now the last reason I'm going to share with you guys is that your oven temperature is simply too low. Now this can unfortunately cause a few problems, so firstly it can slow down the formation of air bubbles. Now when a cake is baked in a low temperature oven, the batter will take longer to heat up and the leavening agents will react slowly, producing fewer and smaller air bubbles. And what this can result in is a more kind of dense and heavy cake which hasn't risen properly and can sink in the middle as it cools. Now another problem if your oven temperature is too low is your cake is not going to bake in the required time as stated in the recipe. So for example, if your cake should take 30 minutes to cook, it's not going to be cooked in those 30 minutes if the oven temperature is not the same as what's stated in the recipe. And this can also result in you opening the oven door too early to check the cake without you even realizing. Now to combat this problem, I have two tips for you guys. So one is to check your oven temperature with an oven thermometer. And this is just going to help you determine whether your oven perhaps runs a little too cold or a little too hot. 
Secondly is determining whether your recipe is using a convection or a conventional oven. Now I have talked about this in more depth in a previous video and I'll post a link to that below if you want to check it out. But basically a convection oven is going to cook your cakes much faster than a conventional oven. So say for example in many of my recipes I instruct you to bake a cake at 160C using a convection oven. So if you don't have a convection oven then you will need to increase the temperature by about 15 degrees Celsius to make sure that your cake is baking at the same rate as mine. So that is it guys, I hope this video helps solve you know, some of your sinking cake problems and I'll see you in the next video.